in the workshop, fitting the Castle V6 boiler to a suitable baseboard. This is a magnetic knife block, and the other week, when I was in my local Lidl supermarket, browsing the centre aisle, as you do, I saw this and I thought to myself, that looks like it will be okay for mounting the boiler on. On the back of this baseboard, there was this thing. This is like a prop, so you can sit it upright. So I removed that, and then using my orbital sander, I sanded down the board, because to be perfectly honest, it was a bit rough. But I can't complain for £3.99. I was pleasantly surprised to find that the cast iron ring that I machined earlier fits perfectly on this board, and I could now follow this through by rambling on about the calibrated eye, but it was nothing to do with that, it was pure luck. My logic said, well, if this is no good for the boiler base, I will fasten it to the wall in the workshop, and I can stick tools on it as it is magnetic. But as it is such a perfect fit for the boiler base that I made, I thought, well, it'll do the job. So here I've marked out the positions to drill the holes. There was a bit of a problem though. Two of the holes went through the magnetic strip that's inside the board. And it took quite a bit of effort to drill the holes properly. The material that the magnets inside the board are made from is very hard indeed. But after blunting a couple of smaller drills, finally I managed to drill the magnet. This clip shows me drilling the quarter of an inch diameter holes which will take the M6 bolts. Once I'd finished drilling all the holes in the baseboard, I needed to apply some varnish. And for this I'm using the small brush that I got from the Leeds model shop, which is a really good varnish brush. But unfortunately, in this instance, I don't want a varnished finish. I want more of a wax finish, but I don't think that a wax finish is going to be durable enough for the baseboard of a steam engine boiler. It's useful to use a brush to make sure you get a good even spread of varnish on the work. What I did next was to take a piece of lint-free cotton cloth. I applied some white spirit to this cotton cloth, and here I'm using it to wipe off the varnish. It doesn't wipe off the varnish entirely, it just spreads it out a little more evenly. And the second cloth that I used is a dry one, but leaves sufficient on the board itself to waterproof it. This is the underside part of the board that I'm varnishing first, and now I need to turn it over so I can varnish the other side, as well as the edge of the board. So here's the underside looking really good. Time to put some allen bolts in the holes and then quickly turn it over before they fall out. And now with the top surface uppermost, I can continue the varnishing of this side. Exactly the same principle, first apply the varnish with the brush, then use a cloth with some white spirit on it to dilute the varnish and rub more of the varnish into the grain of the wood, followed by wiping it off with a dry cloth. This may seem to be a bit of a mad way to do the job, but it works for me. The wooden bases that I've made for steam engines over the years still seem to look okay. When it comes to varnishing around the edges, I'm just using the brush. I don't mind a bit of thickness of varnish down the sides. Eventually, the board looks like this. It has a nice sheen to it, rather than a painted with a tar brush effect of over varnishing. Once the varnish had dried thoroughly, I counterboard the holes underneath the baseboard, and the purpose of doing this is just to hide the heads of the Allen caphead bolts. I could have used countersunk bolts for this job, but I didn't have any of them in M6. I don't use a lot of metric stuff in my workshop. After a final tightening of the bolts, the job is completed, and the cast iron ring that supports the ash pan is securely fitted to the board. All that's left to do now is to just tighten the Allen caphead bolts that hold the ash pan to the cast iron ring. To be perfectly honest, I did have to shorten these bolts very, very slightly. I used the belt sander for this job. By holding the bolts one at a time in a pair of pliers, the sanding belt soon trimmed them to size. And in this clip, I'm tightening the very last bolt. The cast iron ring is mounted equidistantly from each end of the board. I'm taking a few measurements just to make sure that the block that holds the water pump is in the correct position because it won't look good if it's not in the right place. And once I've finalised the position where I'm going to put the block, I use my modified pencil to mark through the holes onto the board. In this clip I'm drilling a couple of pilot holes to accept the wood screws that are going to hold the block onto the baseboard. And for this job I'm using a very small Bosch rechargeable drill. 
It's not quite as bulky as the other ones because it doesn't carry a large battery. You just plug it into the charger when you're not using it. And not only is this a really good quality electric drill, it's also a really good quality electric screwdriver. So once I drilled the pilot holes, I fitted a screwdriver bit and screwed the block in place using the same tool. In the next episode, I will be describing the fitting of the water pump and the piping of the water pump to the boiler. And once that's done, I'll be able to raise some steam using coal as a fuel. I'll look forward to that episode. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.